What's up guys, welcome to potentially the last week of this training cycle. We'll uh, kind of see how this all goes. Um, I'm gonna have a little bit of a deload and then one last big block leading into Worlds, but we are in peak condition pretty much for this block. Uh, to start with today, we did some competition squats. We worked up through triples there. Um, I'm not sure the kilos on them because I used pound plates like a heathen. Uh, so I did uh, I think 530 for a triple and then I did 565 for a triple and then I did 600 for my top one, which is 272 and a half kilos. Uh, so the goal for this whole training cycle was to do 270 and today I was a little bit beyond that. Um, I gave it a nine. I think it was, it's probably very realistic uh, or sorry, it was very realistic for me to do a, another rep there. I don't know that I would have gotten two more so I didn't call it an eight and a half, uh, called that one a nine. And that puts me about five kilos above my goal projection. Uh, so based on that set, my estimated one rep max is 305 kilos on my competition squat, which I'm very, very happy with. Uh, my goal for this cycle was to get up into the 300s. So I'm hoping by Worlds to be able to put together a pretty good squat, um, being relatively close to, you know, back when I was strong and squatted that 315 squat. Um, also did my competition bench today, hit another uh, PR there. So I worked up, did 145 for a triple. I did 152 and a half for a triple and I did 162 and a half for a triple, which is 358 for three. Uh, called that one a nine, definitely had one more in the tank. First rep was real fast. Uh, the third rep, I kind of ego paused a little bit longer and uh, yeah, it moved really well, so I was, I was pretty happy with that. Called it a nine. And after my bench PR, we did our question of the day. Our question of the day today is going to refer to a number of questions that we've gotten over the last little while. Uh, if you guys remember, a little while back we made a post on YouTube, which apparently is a thing you can do, uh, asking for questions of the day. We got a ton of awesome questions. Uh, and I think at least two or three of them were about glute activation. Now, uh, to properly approach this topic, I wanna start off by saying I'm not a physiotherapist, I am not a chiropractor, I am not uh, formally trained in injury diagnosis or rehab or anything like that. I'm a strength coach. Uh, so my scope is going to be that. But basically, glute activation is kind of, it's just an improper terminology. Uh, if you can squat and stand the bar up, your glutes are active, they're working. The problem becomes when things are oriented prop improperly, uh, usually as a part of a larger issue with the movement as a whole. So if you're not feeling your glutes or you're not feeling like uh, things are in the right position, that's more the thinking that I think we need. When we talk about glute activation, like, oh, my glutes aren't working, we tend to get into a lot of clamshells and very rehab type movements, which of course have their time and place. But if you're an athlete who can already properly squat four or 500 pounds, chances are your glutes are firing to a much more uh, adequate degree, or sorry, there you go. I was using the improper terminology already. Chances are you're working, uh, your body is working, to the degree that it needs to be, uh, and much more, much beyond the degree where somebody would need those small isometric movements. So, my recommendation if you feel like your glutes aren't firing or aren't working, is look at your movement overall. If you need to improve the way that your knees move throughout the lift, uh, a lot of times if we get two knee valgus, then we're gonna go into flexion in the low back, we're gonna, we're gonna put a lot of that stress on the extensors of the back as opposed to the tissues that should be doing the work. Uh, so a lot of times it's, it's a bigger issue uh, and we can look at doing things like tempo squats and pause squats and pin squats. Uh, single leg work can be beneficial for people who have this sort of feeling like, oh, my glutes aren't working. But I think we need to get away from thinking about it in terms of activation or this muscle isn't working because in truth, Unless you have a pretty severe spinal injury or some sort of impingement on the nerve root, the muscle is working. You simply need to move a little bit better to feel like things are where they should be. Hopefully that makes sense and hopefully I can contribute to us having uh, a better directed discussion about these kinds of feelings like your glutes aren't working. 
But that's enough of me. Now let's get back to me for the rest of the wrap up. Moving on with the wrap up, we did some 600 overhead press, uh, worked up through, I'm not even sure what my wrap up sets were. I think it was 65, 70, 75 kilos. Uh, and I think 75 kilos is just under 180 pounds, maybe 175, 176, somewhere in there. Uh, so pretty good for me, uh, even in terms of just regular overhead press reps, but these were with a six second eccentric. So pretty happy with how my overhead press is coming along this block, uh, especially given the fact that every rep that I've done overhead has had a really disgusting, exaggerated tempo. You'll have to forgive the shirtlessness. We were filming some B-roll for Tattoo Tuesday, which should be coming out very soon, uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about my rib piece here and we'll get into that later. But that is about it for today. Tomorrow I'm gonna do my competition deadlifts, hoping to be projecting uh, where I wanna be. My squat is above where I want it to be. My bench is right where I had hoped it would be. And my deadlift is right around where I hoped it would be as well. So all in all, this training cycle with the exaggerated eccentric stuff has been going really, really well for me. Uh, I think part of it is the fact that there was a change. Not necessarily that the eccentric stuff is the key and that I'll be doing that forever and that was the magic thing, but I think going from consistently doing singles, uh, doing you know one and a half micro cycles a week like I was for a while there, going into doing a little bit less frequency, a little bit less overall volume, uh, and a little bit higher average intensity, I would imagine. I haven't quite looked at the numbers yet, but I think that change is a big part of why I've seen so much progress, uh, as well as the eccentric stuff. I mean, you can definitely get strong doing it, and we will be talking a lot more about that. I know I've been getting a ton, a ton of questions, and we're making a video specifically about the science behind eccentric training, as well as my thoughts as I wrap up. So anecdotally, what I found to be the biggest benefits and drawbacks of this style of training. So look forward to that. Uh, but that wraps everything up. Go check out calgarybarbell.com. We got fresh apparel. We got a form check service on there. Uh, it's basically a snapshot of online coaching. We just brought on Connor as an online coach. Lots of exciting stuff happening, calgarybarbell.com. Thanks for tuning in guys, and we'll see you very soon.